Now, Rwanda Utilities Regulatory Authority has announced new electricity tariffs which take effect from today. Now, these tariffs replace the previous ones, which was set on 1st of January 2017. And we are now joined live in studio by Patrick Nirishema, who is actually the Director General of Rura, to shed some light on this latest development. Patrick, first of all, the top question is, what was the rationale behind these changes of these tariffs? Um, the change of this tariff is actually a natural process. After one and a half plus uh, of the tariff being in place, uh, many factors have changed, uh, cost factors uh, and so on and so forth, and we had to revise the tariff to make sure that the tariff is cost reflective, the utility can sustain itself, and the customers can be happy. Mm -hmm. And of course, top, whenever any changes are made uh, to this magnitude, most of the time you'll hear players complaining that they were not part of that conversation, they were not involved. What would you say about the consultation process? Were they involved? How deep did the consultation go? Uh, I would say two things. First of all, there was extensive consultation. Uh, the process took about eight months uh, during the review. And secondly, the outcome is very good news for a lot of the customers. So uh, rather than compliance, I think there's a lot of um, appreciation for the new tariff. Mm -hmm. But uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, that aspect of saying that uh, they've actually received it with good news, there are those areas where uh, prices have actually gone higher, and in, in some instances, most of them actually, the prices have not really changed that much. Uh, how was that done? I mean, did you go on, on a door-to-door -door situation because we never saw that, uh, uh, you know, consultation happening? Okay, first of all, uh, let me briefly talk about the different uh, categories of customers and what we've done. Mm -hmm. uh, very good news for industrial customers because they get the lowest electricity tariff in the region. Mm -hmm. So I think that's very good news. Uh, the second category with very good news is the hotel industry. The tariff has remained unchanged, but considering that the overall price would have gone up, maintaining where it was, uh, with the uh, one and franc dep depreciating against the dollar, right. they actually get a lower price if you look at it in US dollar. Mm -hmm. Very good news for, for the hotel industry. Mm -hmm. The third group is the, uh, for everybody, is the water pricing. We are now revising the water price, but end user water price, but 50% of uh, the cost of water is actually electricity. Mm -hmm. And again, the price uh, for water uh, received special consideration. Mm -hmm. Um, the other category of people, which is probably 80% uh, of the citizens in the country, mm -hmm. is uh, the low lifeline tariff, mm -hmm. very low income earners. Mm -hmm. And then for the average uh, income earners, again, uh, the price wasn't changed. Again, good news because uh, over the last one and a half, the cost has gone up, so by keeping them where they are, uh, it's a very positive, uh, positive uh, move on the side uh, of the utility regulatory authority, but also on the side of government. Mm -hmm. Government has maintained a uh, subsidy to keep uh, particular industry, the industry or, areas, uh, yes. to, to keep them low, as I said, the lowest now in the region. Uh, also, the hotel industry receives a subsidy, uh, special consideration given Rwanda's push uh, to become uh, a MICE hub um, with all sorts of global meetings, mm -hmm. conventions happening in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. Um, and then for the water side is for the benefit of everybody because if the electricity goes up, then the water price will also go up, so they benefit uh, double. So, uh, so I think overall it's good news. And if you look at even where it has increased, it's in the range of uh, anywhere between 8 and 11% uh, increase. So if you look at the overall pricing of things out there, commodities and things that people buy, uh, after one year and a half, uh, with the depreciation of the franc against the dollar and so on and so forth, an increase of 8 to 11 percent is not very significant. Uh, we will definitely interrogate that, but of course, let's talk yeah. about the expected impact, because of course, uh, there will be some uh, shifts here and there. What sort of uh, uh, impact do you see as a regulator uh, from this particular move, especially to the economy of Rwanda? Uh, first of all, we expect uh, much more positive movement in terms of uh, investment into uh, the industrial sector. Um, we also expect that they will take advantage. Uh, we have a time of use tariff, which means that if you operate in off-peak hours, you even get a much lower tariff. So again, uh, we expect to see more production during off-peak hours, uh, during the night, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think in terms of the economy, we expect a lot of positive uh, uh, outcome. 
Also, the hotel industry is quite significant, uh, so we also think there will be a positive uh, outcome there. Mm -hmm. So overall, I would say this tariff should have a positive impact. Of course, after setting a tariff, we also monitor uh, to see the regulatory impact assessment of what, uh, what has happened after we set the tariff, and that informs the next review um, which we'll be doing, yeah. Right. Earlier on, you say that an 11% increase is not that big to the areas that have seen an increase, but of course, uh, the, 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 the impact as far as the cost of living is concerned affects, uh, you know, most of the people who are actually going to be consuming this uh, electricity. And for, to them, even a 1% increase affects their daily, uh, you know, usage of whatever monies that they have. How user-friendly, as far as the ordinary citizen is concerned, were this or are these changes? First of all, for more than 80% of the citizen, the tariff doesn't change. Mm -hmm. I think that, that's important to, 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 to clarify. Right. So it's only the heavy consumers mm -hmm. that really see an increase. Mm -hmm. And for the heavy consumers, usually they have much more economic means. Mm -hmm. And so there's a logic to tariff setting. Uh, if, for example, you're a residential customer, uh, and you consume in excess of 50 kilowatt hours per month. That's a reflection that you have, you know, some machinery in your house and you're using all sorts of, which means you're economically capable um, to, 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 to pay. So that extra is not really hurting the middle to low income uh, earners. It's, it's really going to the high income earners who will not see a significant impact uh, on them. Again, also in the non-residential, uh, this will be people who are in retailing and and all kinds of commercial activity that is not industrial in nature. The cost of electricity is not a very significant part of their cost structure. So, so if it is already not a significant part of their cost structure, an increase of let's say 8%, 10% on already a small part of their cost structure, that's why I say it is not significant. So we've done a lot of economic analysis, we took time, we consulted, uh, we talked to different uh, customer categories, the consumer associations, um, and so there's been extensive consultation. We've done uh, all the economic analysis required, and we're quite confident that this time will have a positive impact, and we don't anticipate really any significant uh, negative impact, even where the end increase has happened. Right. So what we expect is definitely uh, good news as far as uh, to the areas, as far as the economy is concerned, the industrial areas, and uh, you don't expect any aftershocks as far as complaints here and there coming along. No, no, we don't expect any aftershocks. Perfect. Thank you so much, Patrick, for your time. Thank you very much.